The next step is to do pretty much the same thing. We want to determine how many piracy points there were near the Caribbean islands. So first, I definitely want to clear my selection, make sure that we aren't interfering with um, analyses that we're going to do next. I'm going to zoom in to this data set. And I'm going to turn everything else off because we want to keep our map clean. All right, so we're showing the piracy points and the islands. All right, now we could do the same thing, a select by location, but the reason I want to show you how to do a buffer and a clip is A, to expose you to the buffer and clip tool. Um, clipping and erasing both come in very handy. A clip is like a cookie cutter that you're going to stamp over the data and keep everything inside that shape and get rid of everything else. And so if we were to buffer these islands to the distance that we want to search within and then use that buffer to clip the points, we're going to find all the points that are within the distance that we, uh, that we care about. And looking back at the instructions, it looks like we are interested in all the points that fall within 100 nautical miles of the Caribbean islands. So let's go ahead and run a buffer first using the geoprocessing search. You'll see that there's a new tool called the pairwise buffer. So our input features are going to be the islands. That's what we want to create a larger shape around. Um, we should definitely name this. Um, And we'll put our units in there so we know what we're doing. We're going to put our 100 nautical miles in here. Our method, it's interesting that they're asking for a linear unit. I didn't notice that before. But we're going to make a geodesic calculation and preserve the shape as it would be on the globe. And um, I think we want to dissolve this here. We're going to, if, if each one of our features in the islands data set had its own buffer, we'd have a bunch of overlaps. And I think we want to dissolve the output into one big, just smooth feature. All right, we'll give that a run. All right, and here's our output. Okay, so this is the area within 100 nautical miles of the Caribbean islands, and now we can use this shape to clip our points. So we're going to go back into the geoprocessing window. And there is, of course, a pairwise clip tool that provides enhanced functionality, but we're going to go ahead and use the good old clip tool. So our input features, there's a clip feature a lot of these uh, tools I like to set up backward. The clip feature to me reads like the cookie cutter. This is the thing that we want to use as our cutter. And that I know want, that I want to be the buffer. So that's this. So then the thing that we're going to cut is our input features. So that's going to be the points. And then here we should obviously rename this. Um, within all right and let's clip it now doesn't look like anything changed so what habit do I want you to kind of create over the semester includes turning off your inputs so that you can evaluate your outputs all right so we've run the clip tool we've turned off our inputs and we've evaluated that uh, we've just got the remaining points that are within our buffer. So we can go into this attribute table to figure out how many points are left. And you can see right down here, there are 232 points in this data set. So there are a lot of different ways to uh, manipulate spatial data. Um, this exercise is uh, designed to kind of give you an overview of some of the most common tools that we use.